This is Vostok Station in the Antarctic. It's one of the oldest, coldest and most isolated research stations in the world. It's also slowly sinking into the snow. This is the new Vostok Station. It rests on modern struts with automatic adjustable height and it took seven trips to carry the 133 station modules from the coast of Antarctica 1,000 miles inward. So, let's discuss it in today's episode of Built Up. Between July 16th, 1819, a sailing ship called Vostok set sail from Russia and headed south for the unexplored southernmost continent. It was accompanied by a sister ship named Mirny, and after a three-month journey, in 1921, they discovered Antarctica. While Mirny lent its name to the Mirny Station, established in 1956, the Vostok was the inspiration for the Soviet Antarctic Winter Complex that was constructed in 1957. The building is located almost 1,000 miles or 1,500 kilometers from the coast of Antarctica and it's located at an elevation of 10,000 feet. Polar explorer Vasily Sidorov was responsible for maintaining the station for many years. In 1974, the Scottish researchers discovered a shocking truth. There was a subglacial lake right beneath the station, which they named Lake Vostok. The lake's existence was confirmed over two decades later in 1996 when a team of Russian and British experts investigated it. When it was constructed, the Vostok station was one of the most technologically advanced Antarctic stations in the world. But oh, how things change after 70 years. The last inspection declared that the station was 97% worn out and researchers had to work in abysmal conditions. But that wasn't the only issue plaguing the old Vostok station. You see, building a research station so deep in the Antarctic continent comes with its downsides. The station began sinking into the snow. These two main reasons are why, in 2020, preparations for the new Vostok station began to take shape. Now, don't forget to subscribe if you liked the video so far. The Belarusian and Russian components were assembled and tested in the city of Gatchina near St. Petersburg. The Russian government later tested them for functionality in 2020. They all passed the test and they were finally ready to be shipped to the Antarctic coast. In October that same year, machines loaded all 133 modules on board a nuclear-powered freighter called Sevmor Putsch. From the port of St. Petersburg, the freighter headed south. As the ship was nearing its destination, one of the freighter's propellers broke down. Near the coast of Angola in Central Africa, the ship was forced to return to St. Petersburg with all of the equipment on board. They missed their deadline to deliver the cargo. The winter was approaching which meant that Russians had to wait another year before they could attempt to deliver the components once more. In October 2021, the 133 modules were loaded onto not one, but two different motor vessels. The first one was Ms. Desneva, and the second was Andrei Osipov. The tanker Yaroslav Mudry supplied the ships with sufficient fuel for the journey, while the powerful ice-breaking ship Kapitan Klebnikov help them cross the thick ice near Antarctica. After a long journey, the four ships made it to the Russian station in Antarctica named Progress. They unloaded all of the modules and left before the winter snows could trap them in the ice. The modules were later tied to Caterpillar vehicles and transported 1,000 miles across the snowy continent. Before they could complete the journey, Russia set up several fuel depots where the Caterpillars would refuel and continue the journey. But there were too many materials and the caterpillars could only carry a few things at a time. For example, on the first five trips, the caterpillars managed to transport 900 tons worth of material. The remaining 300 tons needed two additional trips to be transported to the location of the old Vostok station. All of the modules were delivered by 2022, but before they could even hope to start construction, they had to clear the terrain. After all, they didn't want another sinking station like the old Vostok. That's why, before putting the 36 struts that would hold the five Antarctic modules in place, 
They had to prepare an area of snow measuring 200 meters long by 120 meters wide. During two summers, powerful machines were used to compact the layer of snow to a total depth of 10 feet or 3 meters. Prepared this way, the terrain could withstand the weight of not just one, but five Vostok research stations, putting one on top of the other. After the snowy terrain was prepared, workers and powerful cranes lifted the foundations and put them in place. The Vostok station sits on 10-foot, 3-meter high struts. They have a wide base to evenly distribute the pressure of the station. They even have adjustable heights, which will help the station move up and down depending on the snow level that year. With the adjustable legs of the station in place, workers began putting the five different modules in place and securing them to the base. If everything went according to plan, the Vostok Research Station would have begun operations this year. But several delays prevented it. When complete, this will be one of the most advanced and modern research stations in Antarctica. In January this year, the Vostok Station was put in operation. But don't get your hopes up, this was simply a test run. The station will need to complete countless tests before it can begin accepting employees to live there. The process is expected to take two years unless something derails the process. So, we can expect the new station to begin operations in January 2026. And speaking of operations, did you know that the new Vostok station will be one of 10 Russian-owned stations in the Antarctic? It's true, but that's not all. This is the only station that's located inland instead of near the coast, and it's one of five stations that will operate year-round. The remaining five operate only seasonally. This is why Russia is taking all the precautionary measures to ensure the Vostok station can support life. In the summer months, the station can comfortably house exactly 35 researchers, but during the winter months, the station's capacity drops down to only 15. The change in personnel is made using the iconic DC-3 BT-67 Basler turbo aircraft that can take off and land on icy runways. The employees will have five different modules and 3,000 square meters of living space to call one. Two of the five modules will be residential, the other two will contain life-sustaining technical equipment, and the fifth is for the workshop and garage. To make sure living conditions don't become unbearable for people living there, there is a diesel generator paired up with an electricity system. There's also a water treatment plant that supplies the modules with fresh drinking water. If the diesel generator fails, there's always the backup generator employees can fall back on. The complex is 460 feet or 140 meters long, 45 feet or 13.5 meters wide and has a height of 57 feet or 17.5 meters high. To make sure the building will stay warm even during extreme frost events, all of the modules are covered with 95 centimeters of insulation coupled with a facade made from composite panels. Vostok has been officially named Russia's coldest and most isolated station in the Antarctic. Some have even named this area the Pole of Cold. There, the average annual humidity is set around 71%. After all, it's not uncommon for temperatures near Vostok station to drop to minus 128 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 89 Celsius, which is the coldest temperature ever measured on the face of the Earth. There's no doubt that the Vostok station is state-of-the-art and very advanced. It's so advanced that it puts other stations to shame. After seeing the modernized Russian Vostok station, the US, the UK and New Zealand began modernizing their stations as well. After updating their own environmental and safety standards, they decided that these stations no longer meet them. As a result, some of their stations will begin implementing modernization plans. Take, for example, the Signy station, operated by the UK. It's a summer-only station, which is left unattended during the winter months. Even though it's one of the smallest stations in Antarctica, with a maximum of 12 science and support staff on site, the station needs to be modernized if the station wants to continue operations. A full redevelopment in accordance with the environment protocol will breathe new life into the structure. Even though the specific plans for the redevelopment are still being discussed, the new station will be more efficient and improve operations for researchers. But this is only one of many stations currently undergoing modernization. So, would you ever live inside an Antarctic research station for several months? Tell us in the comments down below.
Now, here's another video Mega Project enthusiasts enjoy. Bye for now.